Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In this video, we'll build a new style transfer algorithm and we'll test it out on different content and style images. So this is the entire folder that you might find on the GitHub that is linked below. So this file called style transfer.py, this contains the code for transferring style from one image to another. The image that gets the style is called content image and the image whose style is transferred is called a style image. So if this is the first video that you're watching about this series, let me just tell you that I have made a previous video where I have explained the research paper. I'll assume that you know a lot of theory behind the style transfer. So if you don't, it's just a 15 minute video, just go ahead and watch that and then come back to this. So in this video, we'll actually code it and I, will, I won't go into detail about the theory. So I'll just explain how the code works. All right, so let me just open this file. Okay, so first of all, we'll import the libraries that we're gonna need, that is the torch PIL for uh, Python image, pillow for manipulating loading images, matplotlib and numpy. And then we'll check if CUDA is available. So we'll set that to CUDA, otherwise device will be set to CPU. Then we'll load pre-trained VGG19 model. All the style transfer is done using VGG19. There are a lot of speculations uh, as to why this works better than all other models. So the best accepted answer is that VGG19 has a lot of layers so it learns in different scales and so that's why it captures more detail about the input about the content or and the style other models down sample or up sample very quickly so they lose a lot of background information so this is what is accepted about vgg19 about why it's used a lot in style transfer and then we'll set the required grad to false because we don't want to track the gradients because we won't retrain this model we'll just use the pre-trained model all right now send that model to the device and let's just print the model and I'll, I'll show you why I've printed the model. All right. Now this function model activations will return the activations of particular layers in the model. So if, if it was a previous video in that we have already discussed that we, we're going to use six layers or six parts of the six activations of the uh, VGG19 model. And that is first part of convolution one, con one, first part of two, three, fourth and fifth. And the second part of con fourth that is for measuring content loss and just others the five will be used to measure the style loss so this is that and these are mapped in dictionary so these are mapped with their layer numbers so the name and the numbers so how do we get these numbers let me just that's why i printed this model here let me just show you so i'll just copy this path and okay first of all let me just uh, comment everything else so that it won't start executing all right now let me just run py okay so here's the model that we already printed so let's just see the layer numbers so on the left there are layer numbers let me just make this bigger so yeah right so layer number zero is con one one and then layer number five i guess five is con two one so what these notations actually mean, I have discussed that this also in detail in the previous video where we have discussed the research paper. So con11, this is con12, layer number 5. And then as the dimension changes from 128 to 256, somewhere here, layer number 10. Let me just show you. Okay, so this is con31 and so on. So these are the layers that we're going to use for capturing style and content loss. Okay, so first of all, what this function does is just pass the model, it will just pass the input to the model and it will iterate through each of the layers. It will iterate through each of the layers in the model. So here it is. All right, now it will iterate through that and pass and keep on passing the input and calculating the output of each layer. And if that layer is found in this dictionary, it will just store it in a features dictionary and then it will return that feature so we have all the features activated features that we want and it is mentioned in, in here all right now this is simple transform to resize the image to 400 by 400 because we cannot work on you know hd images because we are not working with a very powerful gpu now normalize it and convert it into tensor now here what i've done is i have passed content and style image I'm loading content and style image using pillow library. So I have not 
So I'm not using command line arguments to pass the input that uh, well maybe I will do that before uploading to GitHub but uh, I was just testing this out so I just loaded directly using pillow. So what this assumes is that you have a, an image named this one content and one style in this uh, folder in which the code is contained. So uh, right now I don't have it because I have already saved the output to this outputs folder these outputs. So I'll just show you that in the uh, by the end of this video. But this is what it means and then we'll transform it and send it to the device and then image convert this function I am convert is what this does is it takes a tensor PyTorch tensor and then converts it into a form that can be printed using matplotlib and that's what we are doing we are printing style and content image here gram matrix correlation between the feature matrices of the style image which is basically the uh, matrix multiplication of a, of a feature with its transpose so that's what we are doing here and I've discussed again I've discussed this in detail in the previous video and it is really important gram matrix now what we'll do is we'll create a target image that will combine style and content so target image the size the size will be the same as content so we have uh, cloned the content image and we have set required grad to true because we will optimize this which needs gradients and then we'll set this to device now what we'll do is we'll first of all capture style and content features outside of the optimization loop because style and content images will will not change they won't change here now style weights style weight measurement is a dictionary that will contain how much weight each layer will have for calculating style laws so more the weight more the style will be applied using that layer right so uh, i experiment with this a lot so in the previous video i've already told that the style is captured by the lower layers and the content is captured by the higher layers so the, st the style weight of lower layers must be more uh, well that that's logical i've experimented with this a lot so in the previous iteration i had this set to 1.0 and all of them to uh, 0.5 in, in decreasing order but in the last run i tested it out with this configuration so con11 had highest and then con21 had a bit lower value and then all the last three of them had same value and the results were pretty good so i'll just leave it as it is now i want you to just experiment with this a lot you know set this to higher value and then set all of them to a lower value but not the same value and then just just try to experiment with this now style grams so we'll calculate gram matrices for the style features right so these are the style features that we've already calculated and we'll calculate the gram matrix so what we'll do is we'll pass each layer to this function gram matrix and then we'll store it in a dictionary so layer name and its gram matrix now content and style weight these are the beta and gamma so these are hyperparameters so content weight is set to 1000 and style weight is set to 1 to uh, 1 exponent 8 which means 10 to the power 8 right so this is a common practice we set style weight to a much higher value uh, compared to content weight to capture more of the style otherwise style won't be captured now you again you can also experiment with this you may change this value to 5 to 10 and just experiment with this generally it's a practice that the style weight is much higher than content weight otherwise the style won't be captured now this print after variable will output the result after every 100 iterations at this I've set this to 100 and I usually what I do is I break it around 300 to 400 iteration so I when when I get the result of 300 or 400 iteration I just uh, break out of the program but I set number of epochs total epochs to 4000 so that if, if at all I want to see you know 2000th epoch i can do that but generally i have never reached that value optimizer will use a torch.adam learning rate is 0.2 again this is a hyperparameter you can experiment around this with a lot and then we'll optimize target now target features will uh, get model activations and content loss to get the content loss what we'll do is content features con 4 4 to uh, target features con 4, 4 to and then we'll get the square squared loss of that this content loss is basically the squared loss now style loss gets a bit tricky what we'll do is we'll iterate through each of the style weights and then we'll get style gram and target gram the gram matrices of style image and gram matrices of target image now we have already calculated the style style grams the gram matrix of style image but now we need to calculate the target gram the target the gram, gram matrix of target image so we'll do that here and then we'll add the style weight of this particular feature to the total style loss and that is 
uh, torch dot mean of the squared loss between target gram and style gram and this part is just to normalize it the depth width now total loss is content weight times content loss and style weight times style loss so these content weight and style weight are alpha and are beta and gamma and uh, those are the hyperparameters now we'll print the loss after every 10th iteration and then we'll optimize it syntax is pretty clear dot optimizer dot zero grad total loss dot backward and optimizer dot step if you don't know what this does i have a video series about pytorch for beginners you can just watch that and then after every print after that is every 100 iteration just show the image and save the image uh, in the fo folder right so this is the entire program when you run this what you have to do is just change this part bring a content and bring a style image into the folder and then just change this part of the program and just run this and it will work fine now let me just show you a few outputs that we'll get or something yeah so i had this image for content let me open all three of them and let's just compare them side by side all right and okay so this is the content image this is the style image and what we get is the target image is something like this so this is what we get so this looks like some exotic artwork now uh, I also have this this one so let me just open each and every one of them so I have the style and the content right here okay and just close this and let's compare the output at 100 iteration and output at 300 iteration so as you can see as the iterations increase the style increases more and more so you never need to go for more than 500 iterations so as you can see the 100 iteration itself is pretty good and then 300 it, it becomes a bit distorted because style is taking over the content but yeah this is the basic idea so i i quit uh, i just stopped the program around 300 epochs so yeah there are many many more examples i guess uh, it, these are all available on github now again this is the content image and i have applied this style just open this and see we have this 100 at 100 iteration and at this one at 300 iteration so it's pretty good so this is your own neural style transfer program so there are a lot of other techniques like whitening color transform real-time style transfer and all of these things that have been invented uh, starting from this paper uh, we realized that it is possible to separate style and content of an image using neural networks so this is the basic gist of this paper so if you want me to cover more more of such topics just just write them down in the comment section and i'll surely do that and thanks for watching and i have a lot of other content in works that that is really exciting so stay tuned for more